Hello there, Periscopes. It is Brian here in Jerusalem. Let's get this, and I have a different phone, so I won't have the touch screen thing. And I've taken my phone in because apparently the problem I was having with Phantom Touch is being repaired by Apple. And here I am in Jerusalem. I have been chasing around uh, all day. Well, not all day. We've been trying to find a venue to screen uh, Katie Hopkins' new film, which is all about Jews leaving Europe and coming to Israel. And this film has been attacked mercilessly by the Israeli left in concert with the Dimmy British Jews. And um, the, the Dimmy British Jews do not want this film screened in Israel. They really, really don't want it. No sound. One person says no sound. Is that your own personal problem or uh, other people hearing sound? Press the heart if you hear sound. Um, so Katie, you know, I spoke to Katie. I may or may not be in this film. I don't even know. Um, because what she believes and says about Islam Whilst I don't, I, I'll never endorse anybody's views 100%, and I will never endorse their ways of speaking. I have my own way of speaking about Islam. Um, I, I tend not to uh, beat about the bush. I don't use terms like Islamism and Islamist very often, if at all. Uh, I don't. I just don't see the value to them. I make very clear distinctions between Islam and ideology, which is a believed to be a religion by many of the people who follow it and by many onlookers, but which I perceive to be a heck of a lot more um, political, especially in the way Islam interacts with other people, with the kuffar, with, with who I am. When, when Islam, Islam's set of doctrines and rules, that's the tram, uh, Islam's set of doctrines and rules that they try to apply to other people, make it into, as far as it impacts on me, much more of a political movement. And the goals of it, um, insofar as it has any, are laid out, as far as I'm concerned, in Muhammad's farewell address. I have been ordered to, uh, I have been ordered to conquer all mankind until they say there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is, is his prophet. Um, I, actually, I've been ordered to fight all men until they say there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his prophet. That is a very, very simple creed. And throughout the history of Islam, while some Muslim, many Muslims have chosen to ignore that, uh, many have not. And that's why Islam has gone on and had huge empires and conquered vast swaths of, of the civilized and uncivilized world uh, and was only really beaten back because as a functioning system of governance, it just doesn't produce happiness. It doesn't produce enlightenment. It doesn't produce science. It doesn't produce advancement. It keeps its people subdued, subjugated, and, and down. That's the Muslims, too. And therefore, as a method of organizing your society, it's just not very good at producing progress and, and all of the beauty and... and advancement we see around us here in reasonably safe Jerusalem which is of course very multicultural as you can see walking past me. Um, so I, I choose to speak about Islam in one way Katie's a little bit more upfront and aggressive but we're not saying vastly different things and in terms of the impact of Islam on European societies she's right and this is the point I think when Islam first started growing in Western Europe, and let's, I'll take Britain as an example because that's the one I know the best, with the sort of the first and earliest large-scale Muslim immigrations from Pakistan and Bangladesh, I am pretty certain that very many of those early immigrants were coming to Britain because it was not an Islamic country. They were leaving their s-hole countries and their their enforced Islamic rule behind them. They came for British democracy and British rule of law and, and British values and cultures that were different from their Islamic ones. They were escaping. But 
as the population grows, as the Muslim population grows, the, the, the mosques gain strength, the preachers are given money from outside, the Wahhabi movement from, Pakistan, from Saudi Arabia certainly pumped money in. We had the Deobandi grand of Islam uh, in Pakistan, and this is a firebrand anti-British, anti-Western, anti-civilizational brand of Islam. That takes hold. And the more Muslims there are, the stronger Islam asserts itself. And even if those first generations were trying to get away from Islam, they brought Islam with them. And that's, that's the situation they're in today all across Europe. And what Katie's rightfully identified, and I'm sure I'll see in their film, is just Jews have somewhere to go. When, you know, Jews can escape. And this is why the dimmy Jews of Europe, the, 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 the self -appoint, largely self-appointed uh, community elders, the board of deputies of British Jews, the way that they are attacking Katie and they're attacking anyone who just wants to see a film. This used to be the bedrock of our civilization. Free speech. I may not like what you say, but I will defend to the death your right to say it. Where the hell has that gone? They've been deplatforming her all across Israel today because of, because what they do is they, they give these, these malicious, snide, Lashon Hara calls to people to say, oh, well, have you seen who's sponsoring it? It's this Janice Atkins. She's part of the right, the far right block in the European part. Oh, so what? Listen to the ideas. Listen to the, what she says. Criticize that if you want. Now, she's going to present testimony of some Jews who have definitely left Europe because of Islam, because they felt that Islam was going to pose a threat to their future lives. I am one of those Jews. Ten years ago, I knew what was coming to Britain. I left and I came to my homeland, which is Israel, which is Jerusalem, which is where I'm sitting, where, where I can feel comfortable, even though I'm not speaking the language to you. Jerusalem is the home, the heartland, the center of the Jewish universe. I pity the English, the Brit, the, the Welsh, the Scots, who don't, they don't have, they're losing this because they're not allowed to stick up for it. And yes, if it were me, if I was running the Jewish communities in Europe, I would be for very strong and positive immigration processes. I would, I would enforce them. I would have rules. I would keep to them. I would have quotas. I would have merit-based immigration, all of those things. I'd have strong borders. I'd have walls if necessary, all of that stuff. I'd be advocating for that. Being Jewish wouldn't change a single point of view. I would want England to be English. I would want to hear church bells on Sunday morning, not the moors in from the mosque. I would want to have beer. I would want the natives to eat as many pork sausages as they like in whoever's presence they, they feel, even if it's Ramadan. I don't care. And I don't care if it's Yom Kippur. The natives should be eating. The natives should be drinking. The natives should be having, doing English things, playing cricket on the village green, eating haggis in Scotland, sheltering from the rain in Wales or whatever you do over there. That is what I'd be advocating for as a British Jew. But unfortunately, you're not. What you've got representing British Jewry are a bunch of globalist, seduced by this socialist, communist, bizarre ideal that if we all put aside our borders, we can all live in peace and harmony forever. Well, no, it doesn't work that way. It does not work that way. Some people have different upbringings. Some people have different value systems to you. Some people have value systems that will never, ever align with yours. They will never stop fighting and they will never, ever end jihad to conquer you. They will go quiet sometimes if you're strong and powerful and you impose yourselves upon them, but they won't ever put aside Muhammad's farewell command, I have been ordered to fight all men until they say there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his prophet. That's it. It's very simple. And it doesn't mean you don't, it's not about killing people, it's not about throwing them out, it's not about genocides. But if you assert the power of your own civilization, anybody who doesn't like that can leave. Bye-bye. 
Um, we should be doing a little bit of that here too. Uh, we did it for some years and then the whole peace process in the 90s got underway and we, we backtracked. But for Europe, you've really only got one choice, which is to strengthen yourselves, strengthen your own commitment to your own value systems and ideologies and your own you know, to take back your countries. And that, that to me is what Katie is saying. Um, not going to agree with every word she ever says, but I'm absolutely determined to fight for her right to say it, especially here. And I'm especially pleased that they got her cancelled in Renana, but her film will be shown right here, right on Jaffa Street, right in the centre of Jerusalem. So in the end, it's a much better result than um, a theatre in Renana. So bye bye Renana, nobody misses you. This is Brian of London. I am here in Jerusalem. Brian of London. Me, uh, chip in if you can. Um, and thanks for looking in. And uh, I will see you the next time I periscope, when maybe I will even get my old iPhone 10 back. But thank you, Jono. I must big shout out to Jono for the loan of this iPhone 7, which is fantastic, and not pressing buttons. Bye bye.